Hello everyone, my name is Melody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this glamorous and elegant dress called Milano Dream Dress. This pattern includes two views. View A has a short butterfly sleeves and a long skirt and view B has long flared sleeves with a short skirt. In this tutorial, I'm going to make view B. To make this dress, you will need the pattern. You can find the link in the description box down below. The pattern is created with layers, which means you can print only the size you want. For that, you need to open the PDF file with Acrobat Reader, go to the layer icon and select the size you need. Then print the first page, check the square test. If the measure is accurate, you can print the rest of the pages. Now it's time to assemble the pattern pages. You don't need to trim anything of the pattern. Just carefully place the pattern side by side and use clear tape to assemble them together. You'll see diamonds that contains numbers on the center of the document. These diamonds will tell you the order of the pages. Let's move on to the shopping list. For the main dress fabric, I recommend medium weight non-stretch woven fabric. You can also use viscose or satin fabric like I do in this video, but you have to be extra careful while sewing because those fabric tend to stretch out. You will need a lining. You can also use your main fabric as lining. Then you will need a piece of interfacing. You will use it to reinforce the zip assembly on the center back, which means you are going to cut stripes out of it. An invisible zipper and matching thread. Decatize your fabric before cutting it so it doesn't shrink. It means pressing the fabric on the wrong side using a lot of steam. Cut all your pieces with the chosen view with your fabric folded in half, respecting the grain line. If you are making view A skirt, just add 20 cm to the skirt line. Make sure to mark all the notches and trace out the front and back darts. Cut two stripes of interfacing this should be 1.5 cm by 58 cm long. We will apply it to the zip assembly. Always stitch on a piece of scrap fabric before you begin sewing. You might need to adjust the stitch length or the thread tension. If you are using a flowy fabric like viscose or satin, I highly recommend to stay stitched all the curved pieces on the pattern before you start sewing. As you can see, I didn't do it on my video, but next time I definitely will. Let's start sewing the Milano Dream Dress. Sew the front and back darts on both your main fabric and lining. Press the front darts to the sides and the back darts to the center back. Trace out the cutout seam allowance on the wrong side. Place the front piece on the lining, right sides together and sew around the cutout.
Flip the curve and turn it right side out. Understitch the lining and press. Now we're gonna attach the neckline. This part it's a little bit technical, but I will show you how to do it. Lay your front bodice right side out flat and grab the neckline of both your main fabric and your lining. Pin the neckline right sides together. Your front bodies should be rolled inside at this point. Stitch the front neckline, clip the curve and turn your piece right side out. Understitch the lining. You will have to do this in two steps. Start from the shoulder and stitch as far as you can towards the center neckline. Repeat on the opposite side. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and end. Press the neckline. From now on, we are going to use the front bodies as a single layer. Baste the main fabric and lining together by stitching in a seam allowance. Start stitching at the first armhole notch. Let's move on to the back bodies. Sew the back bodies neckline right sides together. Clip the curve and turn it right side out. Understitch the lining and press the neckline. Mm -hmm. 
Same as for the front, we are going to use the back bodies as a single layer. Baste the main fabric and lining together by stitching in a seam allowance. Start stitching at the top armholes notch. Now we're going to close the shoulder seams. Open the front shoulder seam you left open and pin it to the back, right sides together. Make sure to match the front and back neckline. Turn your garment right side out and gently press the shoulders and neckline. Sew the side seams, finish with an overlocker. Press the seams to the back. Sew the skirt's side seams and finish with an overlocker. Press the seam to the back. Mark 1 cm seam allowance at the center of the front point at the bodice and the skirt's under bust seam on the wrong side. Pin the skirt to the bodice from the middle back to the center front. Make sure to match the notches to the darts and the side seams. Pin the center front point of the underbust seam. The seam allowances should be right on top of each other. Sew the two pieces together. You want to be very precise and stitch right on top of the line you just marked. Stop at the tip and clip the center of the body seam allowance at 1 to 2 mm from the seam line. Lift your pressing foot and position the second side from the center to the middle back. Pin the skirt to the bodies, making sure to match the notches to the darts and the side seams. Finish stitching. Trim the corner of the center front piece. Finish the seam with an overlocker from the middle back to the center. Tie the overlock threads together in the center. Press the seam upwards. If you are using cotton or linen fabric, you can top stitch the bodies to secure the seam upwards. It's time to assemble the invisible zipper. Remember, we treated the main fabric and the lining as a single layer. Iron the interfacing strips onto the middle back, meeting the assembly notch.
overlock the middle back seams. Close the back of the dress by sewing from the zipper assembly notch to the bottom. If you are lining the skirt, you will have to hem both of the skirt's layer before closing the back of the dress. Press the seams open. Mark 2 cm from the bottom of the zipper on the tape. Fold the top of the zipper like this and stitch to secure it. Trim the edges and secure with a lighter. Open the zipper and pin it to the first sides of the center back. The zipper's teeth should start at the very top of the neckline. Stitch with your regular pressing foot in the seam allowance. This step will help you assemble your zipper more precisely. We're doing this instead of basting. Close the zipper and mark down the waist seam on the opposite side of the tape. Open the zipper again, pin the other side on your dress making sure to match the waist seam and stitch with your regular sewing foot in the seam allowance. Close the zipper and check that both sides are symmetrical. Open your zipper. The slider should be below the marks on the bottom of the tape. Stitch using an invisible zipper sewing foot on both sides. I like to secure the top of my zipper. For that, just backstitch a couple of times in the seam allowance. Press the zipper gently. Hem the dress by using the technique of your choice. I simply overlock the bottom, fold it 1.5 cm and stitch at 1 cm from the edge on the right side. The last step is to attach the sleeves to the dress. Stitch the sleeve sides together, finish the seam with an overlocker. Pin the sleeves to the armhole following the notches. The sleeve head is larger than the armhole to give ease to the garment. Make sure to distribute the ease equally between the notches when pinning. Stitch the sleeve to the armhole and repeat on the opposite side. Finish the seams with an overlocker. Press the seam toward the sleeves. Hem the sleeves by folding 0.5 cm, then 1 cm. Stitch on the right side using the foot's width. Et voilà! Your Milano Dream dress is now ready! I hope you will love wearing this dress as much as I do. Here I am showing you how your dress will look like if you mix view A and view B together. I made this dress in this fabulous English embroidery fabric by mixing view A sleeves and view B skirts. I love wearing this dress so much. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you in my next tutorial.